This instructional companion on determinate beams falls under the major topic, statics, which contains the following two chapters, determinate statics and indeterminate statics. The chapter on determinate statics covers topics such as force systems and vectors, distributed forces, which I call distributed loads, which was an instructional companion, equations of equilibrium, types of reactions, or 2D reactions, as there was a instructional companion on that, special members, two force member, uh, which was an instructional companion, determinacy and types of beams, which I've combined here in what I refer to as determinate beams, I'll talk about that in a minute, uh, free body diagrams, 2D equilibrium, uh, couples, hinges, pulleys, there's an instructional companion on that, axial members, trusses, method of joints and sections, zero force members, again an instructional companion, catenary cables, and 3D equilibrium. The way I'd like to introduce this or present this particular topic on the determinate beams is to start with uh, the beam that was used in the distributed loads uh, instructional companion. Uh, the example where we had uh, three pins, uh, we weren't really concerned with that at uh, that particular point, but we had a, a distributed load that went up to 100 pounds per foot, uh, then dropped to 50 pounds per foot. And in that uh, distributed loads uh, instructional companion, we calculated uh, the uh, equivalent uh, force for the triangle uh, on the left and a triangle and a rectangle there. And what we would end up with if we now use the uh, reactions, 2D reactions, pin reactions, we would come up with the following free body diagram. Okay, in the uh, instructional companion on distributed uh, loads, we came up with a F1, an F2, and an F3, and we located those, and we'll uh, actually solve a uh, problem here uh, shortly in another instructional companion. But the pin at A, B, and C generates um, uh, two pin forces uh, at A, two pin forces at B, and two pin forces at uh, C. And so what does that give us? So what happens is, is that if you, uh, I've kind of written all this out to save some YouTube time here. Uh, you've got three equations of equilibrium. Some of the forces in X is zero, some of the forces in Y is zero, and some of the moments about any point you might pick, fixed point you might pick, uh, point P here. That's not a row, but a P. Uh, zero. So what you end up with is you've got three equations of equilibrium, but you've got six unknown reactions. And so what that's referred to is as is statically indeterminate. It doesn't mean it's unsolvable. It just means you cannot come up with uh, the answers from the equations of uh, equilibrium alone. You need equations from some other other place. Well, let's look at some other uh, beams that uh, the MERM has and talk about those. Well, the first additional uh, beam that uh, is still statically indeterminate in the MERM is one in which uh, he's drawn a pin. In fact, he's used the more complex um, symbol for a pin instead of the more simpler one that he used in the other um, in other beams, uh, picture or diagrams, and then a roller and another roller. So essentially. Well, you know, there's three kinds of people, those that can count and those that can't. Uh, I said five, but there's really two, three, four. So four, four unknown reactions um, for that beam. So again, still statically indeterminate. One of the nice things, though, I need to mention here is that uh, what you've really got is a problem with too many unknowns. Uh, if you throw some away and, or change some things, which we're going to do here in a minute, uh, what happens is the loads you get are bigger than the ones that you would get had you left them in there. So it's kind of a built-in safety factor, kind of comforting, kind of warm fuzzy on that one. Okay, well, let's look at another one. In this one, he's uh, just put uh, two pins at each end. Uh, so again, what we've got is two uh, unknowns, another two. So we've got another four uh, unknowns, again, uh, statically indeterminate. The, uh, the beam that we sort of started off with, with the three uh, pins, is really kind of almost called a continuous sort of beam, uh, beam structure. 
And the last one he shows uh, in the MERM, you've got one more complicated, but we're not going to talk about it, is one where you have a cantilever here, but it goes out and has a roller on the right. And uh, it's like the roller on the right over here is like what I say, putting legs on a snake. You really don't need it out there because the reactions back here, AX uh, or the horizontal and vertical in the couples, will support that. So it's an extra load. And this is actually a very famous one and one in which I uh, will solve in another uh, in instructional companion I uh, solve in my class uh, is uh, this particular one using superposition. So this is actually a famous one. Um, definitely learn how to solve and come up with the reaction uh, over there on the right. Okay. Well, let's look at some other possibilities. Let's look at this beam we started with and see what we can do with it. Okay, returning to our uh, beam, I'm going to leave off the distributed load in which we have a pin, 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 uh, all three. So what we need to do is to uh, reduce the six reactions to just three reactions. And I see sort of three, three uh, possibilities that will help us uh, do the types of beams uh, discussion as well. Okay, the first uh, possibility is uh, let's remove B. It's sort of in the middle. Uh, let's remove it and let's uh, reduce uh, pin C uh, from a pin to a roller. Okay, so we've got is a pin and a roller, and if we draw the free body diagram of that, we're going to have our AX and AY over here. But over here, we'll just have a single CY. So there's our three reactions, and uh, what, is, what this referred to, and is mentioned in the MERM and every other textbook, is this is referred to as simply supported. And the reason uh, that it's called simply supported is that it just has the simple three unknowns. You've got three equations of equilibrium, a pin and a roller, three unknowns, and so that's about as simple as you can get. So that's how we uh, discuss that type of beam, simply supported. Okay, the next possibility is this, well, let's remove the uh, pin way out at C and make uh, pin B a uh, roller. So we've, we've now got the following free body diagram. We still have our AX and AY over here at A. But now our vertical force is here, BY. And what that's called, as you can imagine, is called the single overhang. Single overhang. Because if you then took um, A and B and sort of moved them, sort of centered them, uh, symmetrical, uh, you would have the following beam. Of course, you'd just be moving the reaction, so I won't try to draw that free body diagram. But you could have uh, many beams. In fact, uh, very famous beams look like this, bridge, bridge type beams. So you've got an A here and the B here. And as you can imagine, this is called the double overhang. Okay, where again you have the AX and AY here and the BY there, still have three unknowns, uh, but that's uh, those uh, particular types of, of beams. Okay. And some of you may already have been ahead of me, uh, A, B, and C again. Uh, is remove uh, pins B and C and make pin A a cantilever. Kind of ran a little room out of there, but I think you got the, the idea. So that your uh, free body diagram is simply two forces, AX and AY, and then the couple that's in the wall or making the uh, built in uh, C sub A. Okay. So again, three, three unknowns. Again, whatever load you might have out there. And those, I think, cover uh, most of the uh, nomenclature that I'm familiar with. Again, the simply supported, uh, the single or double overhang, or the cantilever. All, all three of those are statically determinate beams. Uh, when you start adding anything uh, to any of those, uh, you get into being a statically indeterminate. And the extra equation uh, typically comes from solid mechanics. Uh, and we'll be talking about that in, in future instructional uh, companions, I am sure. Well, we can't leave our uh, original problem hanging here. Uh, 
we have we have through the distributed loads instructional companion uh, replace the distributed loads with three forces we know their location so what we need now is uh, a problem to solve and going to call that 2d beam a 2d beam certainly that that is well so I suggest that uh, let's just make this a simply supported let's make it simple um, so we have uh, let's remove uh, do one remove B um, make uh, C over here a roller and go from there. So uh, in, a in a future instructional companion, uh, we're going to solve that problem and come up with the reactions at A and C. In fact, in the MEPE, you would just be asked for one of those, and how to get that with just one, one equation is very important, and that's what we'll cover there. Again, I invite you to visit my website as part of your exam preparations and plan of study, www.drtomsclassroom.com.